will I be able to find like that intrinsic value that a lot of educators cling to as why we went into teaching, right? And I was a little bit worried, honestly, about how I would translate that to like the corporate world. But I find a lot of purpose and value in what I do. I help my teammates with things that I know make other people's lives easier. And so I still find that to be really rewarding. Hi, it's Maddie Shermick from Better Career, and in this video, I interview Melissa Chapman, who was a former Spanish teacher, now project manager, who made the career pivot in 90 days. In this video, she walks through her unique process and how she ultimately ended up in the role that she has today. She's also the lead instructor for our new program, the Project Manager Accelerator, so she's going to preview what that program is and what you'll get out of it. Let's get started. Hi, Melissa. It's so great to have you on the podcast. Really excited to hear more about your story and for people to really hear how you made a massive career pivot last year. Um, why don't we kick things off with just a brief introduction? Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. My name is Melissa Chapman, and I have been a project manager for about 10 months now. Um, before that, I was a middle school Spanish teacher, and before that, I did some nonprofit work in program development internationally. So done a little bit of everything, it feels like, and live in Oregon, have six kids in my house right now, and just excited to be here. A full house. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned, you know, before you were in nonprofit sector and then also were a Spanish teacher, you know, what ultimately made you want to make a career change? I was exhausted. You know, there's a lot that gets talked about, about education and teachers and being burnt out, but it was beyond that. There was no work-life balance. I was teaching middle school, coming home to my own middle school daughter and having, you know, nothing left to give to her. With teaching, you can never turn it off. So I was constantly on the weekends feeling like I should be grading. I should be working on, you know, the next lesson plan. And I never really felt like I could be fully present with my kids. And so I was really exhausted that way and just felt like there also wasn't a way in education to grow or move up unless you go into administration, which wasn't something I was interested in. So I just, for a lot of different reasons, just started exploring other options. Yeah, no, that absolutely makes sense. I hear that from a lot of other career changers, especially teachers, feeling burnout, wanting to explore something else. Now, when it comes to making a career move, there's there's so many options. And I often hear career changers say, you know, I don't, I don't even know which roles to pursue or which ones are even open to me. And you ultimately ended up in project management. What made you find, how did you find project management and decide that that was the route for you? Well, first I started listening to a bunch of different podcasts. There are several for transitioning teachers or people just career pivoting in general. So I started listening to these different podcasts and I started hearing about project management and teachers who had specifically pivoted into that. So that intrigued me because I had done some sort of project work before, but not really to that extent. Um, I took some quizzes online and everything kept pointing me to project management, both because those are things that I really enjoyed doing and then also things were my strengths and the things I liked about teaching really like were in line with project management. So I started Googling different things, looking up different things, and everything just kept bringing me back to project management. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Teachers are massive project managers um, doing that every single day in the classroom. Yes, absolutely. So when it came to your job search, I mean, what did that look like um, when you first began your job search and try, you know, decided on project management? You know, the, the most interesting thing about transitioning teachers or educators transitioning into any other career is that our resumes for teaching look very different than the rest of the corporate world. Things that we would have included on there just don't make sense anywhere else. And so a huge mm. part of the process was learning the project management language that I needed and then also translating that on my resume, on my LinkedIn, and really having like the confidence that what I did like to your point was project management. So a school year was a project, right? And so really being able to translate that language. So that was a big part of what I did at the beginning. And my resume went through several different like iterations as I continued to change the format and change the things that made sense. I ended up having like a highlight section that really focused on like project management things I had done, even though I had never had the job title of project manager. I did a lot of managing of projects. And so that was a big part of my revamping of my resume and all that. And so I, I did some upskilling as well and just learning the project management language and realizing, wow, I have been managing projects this whole time. I just didn't know the verbiage to use. So that was a, a big part of that. 
Yeah. And I loved what you said as far as, you know, upskilling and really learning how to translate your experience to project management. I think it's so important to really understand the terminology of the role that you want to pivot into so that you can be successful in translating your experience to it. Because if you don't, you know, really understand the language PM speak, it's it's yes. probably hard to translate your teacher experience to the role. Exactly. And that plays into having confidence, right? And so have mm-hmm. I had to have confidence both in myself and in my experience. I translated that onto my resume and that translates into interview. So when I went into an interview, I could like confidently talk about how my experience was project management, even though it was like just teaching, you know, and to some people, I also found it really important that the companies or organizations that I interviewed with saw value in my previous experience. There are some that just didn't see that. And then there were some that said, no, your teaching experience is project management. Tell us more about that. And so that also helped me mm-hmm. kind of figure out where I wanted to be and who I would be willing to work for based on how they treated me as a teacher as well. Yeah, no, that's that's such a great point as far as how are these companies perceiving you and treating you um, with your unique background. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, what were some of the obstacles that you encountered in your job search process? What did that look like? I think everyone says this, but imposter syndrome is a real thing. Anytime you're pivoting careers, right? Because there's this moment, there's several moments where you think, am I doing the right thing? Can I do this? Does this really translate? Even though I was feeling that confidence in moments. For example, when I applied for the PMP, I got audited and denied the first time. And that set me back, you know, for a couple of days where I just had to stop, reevaluate. Am I making the right decision? What am I doing? Why do I even think a teacher can be a project manager? You know, I really had to do some self-reflection and And then I like picked myself back up and realized, no, I just need to change the wording of a few things and and change what I did. And I was able to do that and reapply and, you know, got the application accepted and moved on from there. But there were those types of things as well. You know, I probably applied to over 100 jobs in the span of a few months. And so, you know, getting those rejection emails over and over, that's a hard part of the job search. And so, what really changed for me was when I kind of revamped my resume in a way to really highlight the skills and the experience I had that was project management and highlight that. Once I was really able to articulate my value as a project manager, the mm-hmm. interview started coming in because it was really clear on my resume, like the experience I had and the skills I had. Wow. And just curious, um, so for those roles that you did hear back from, did you have any internal contacts at those companies or was it purely your application that the recruiter found your application and then called you for a screen? I think that every single interview I had was a cold call type of application. There was one interview I did have where I had reached out to someone through LinkedIn that had a similar role and said, hey, I'd love to do a quick coffee chat. I'm applying for this other role. That person ended up recommending me, you know, internally as someone to look at. And so that did lead to several interviews in that company as well. So that did help. But every job that I applied to was kind of a cold call type of situation. I I worked really hard to apply for jobs in the first 24 hours when they were posted. That was a big game changer for me. You know, there's the setting on LinkedIn where you can edit that. I also always sent some sort of message to the hiring manager or the recruiter every single time. Hey, I applied for this role, all of, all of those things. And, and that seemed to work. The role I have now, I did that. I got an interview through that process. So it does work. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's encouraging to hear that even your your resume alone was able to get you some opportunities. And that really speaks to how well you, you know, really defined your value in your resume. Yeah. People talk a lot about networking and that is a huge thing also, but that's not the only way to get a job, right? Like I think doing that at the same time, like the networking is really important. Like for Within project management, there's a great project management community, and I've built this really great connection, a lot of connections with a lot of people. But so if something were to happen in my current role, I know I have this community to tap into. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the end of the day, a lot of that is about learning and kind of helping me understand project management at a deeper level. But like none of that for me personally got me the job I have, but it could in the future. So, um, you know, that's part of that networking. Yeah, I think taking a multi-threaded approach where, you know, you're applying to roles and also networking can be a really smart way to kind of explore all your options and really tap into potential, um, you know, connections that will come up over time. Exactly. 
So now you've been in your role for almost a year. I mean, what do you, what do you love the most about being a project manager? Well, kind of like what I was talking about earlier about not being able to shut it off. Most of the time I can shut it off when it's the end of the day for me, I can close my computer and I'm able to move on for the day, go make dinner, go do things with my kids, go to the gym. And that was just something that I didn't have before. So work-life balance is huge. Um, but beyond that, I, I think one of the things I struggled with as an educator is sort of how will I be able to find like that intrinsic value that a lot of educators really cling to as mm -hmm. why we went into teaching, right? And I was a little bit worried, honestly, about how I would translate that to like the corporate world. Um, but yeah. I find a lot of purpose and value in what I do. I help my teammates with things. I create these processes and these templates and different things that I know make other people's lives easier. And so I still find that to be really rewarding. I also love that every day is different for me. No two days are ever the same. So for me, the var variety is really great. Um, and it's a mix, right? I'll have meetings with clients. I'll have meetings internally. I'll have time where I can work on my projects. So I like the variety. I like the work-life balance. Um, I like feeling that I have purpose and that I'm creating value. So it's a pretty good fit for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and would you be able to just share a little bit about your company and, and your role, um, just so people can kind of get an idea of what a project manager role could look like? Yeah. So I work for an HR technology implementation company, and I knew nothing about that, to be honest, when I applied for this role. It's interesting with project management, we're not subject matter experts, right? So my team is full of the experts. I've got a benefit specialist and a payroll specialist and an HR specialist. And my job is to kind of help everyone move forward on the project. And so I, I like to say I need to know an inch deep and a mile wide. So I just need to know mm -hmm. enough to be able to make things happen. And so, so, so my company, we maybe take on a client and we help them with their onboarding or we help them optimize the technology that they already use, those types of things. And so I'm usually on the project for the first couple of months to just make sure everything has been implemented correctly, that everything is lined up and good to go and that everything is running smoothly. Um, and so I work with my team to make sure those things happen. Yeah, no, that's that's incredible. I've done some project management in the past, um, but not necessarily um, external facing working with clients. So it's just so interesting to hear the different type of project manager roles mm -hmm. that exist mm -hmm. because it's so it's so diverse as a mm -hmm. profession. Um, you could go and help implement technology, develop technology, mm -hmm. create training programs. Mm -hmm. There's really mm -hmm. so many different types of project manager roles. No, the only thing I was going to add was, you know, there's different elements of project management. A lot of people get worried about, oh, well, I'm really bad at budgets or I'm really bad at, you know, X, Y, and Z. And depending on the role, you may not have to do that as much. Like different, to your point, different project manager roles emphasize different things. Like mine is client facing. I have a lot less to do with budget because by the time I am involved in a project, the budget has already kind of been set, it's been sold, like there's not a lot that I have to do to monitor that part of it. So it just kind of mm. depends on the role, but there's certain parts, like don't let those parts intimidate you if you're thinking about one part of it, well, I'm really bad at finances or I'm bad at budgeting, like that is a part of it and you definitely need to know how to do that. But there are roles yeah. where that's kind of minimal compared to other parts of the job. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, me and budgets don't really mix, so... Um. <laughs> There's some apps um, for that. <laughs> yeah, there's some apps for that. Um, so what about for people that are considering, you know, pivoting into project management? What is, you know, some advice that you have for them as they, you know, embark on their career change? You know, the first thing is to just make sure that's where you want to go. I think a lot of people are like, I need a change. I don't really care what I do. I just need something different. And that's usually not the best way to approach it. I, I do think it's important to sort of make sure that there's clarity and focus on why you want to do what you're looking at. And, and, and is it because of the skills you have? Is it because it's something that in interests you? But making sure you kind of understand that part first, because the rest won't align if that part isn't there. So once you've got that clarity and focus, evaluating the skills that you have and the experiences you have, figuring out what have you done in the past that already is project management, what skills um, can I like add to and upskill is there are there certifications there's a lot of project management certifications out there are there programs that could help me kind of like elevate the skills that I already have and then again networking with other project managers again the community on LinkedIn for example there's just a huge network of people who post every day about pivoting into project management how to highlight mm -hmm. that experience on your resume and your LinkedIn 
how well, like skills that project managers need. There's just a, a great community of people constantly posting and learning from each other. So I love that there is such a vibrant project manager community on on LinkedIn because um, that's something I've heard you talk about a few times. Mm-hmm. Of that there's yeah. a lot of people you know that want to support and champion each other, help mm-hmm. um, provide resources. Um, so that's just really incredible to see. Mm-hmm. So the last thing I wanted to highlight is you are the instructor for Better Careers New Program, the Project Manager Accelerator. I'm yes. curious, what are some things that you hope that um, you know future project managers get out of that program? Yes, I am so excited that you know we connected several months ago about this, and it's just been so fun to be working on this and kind of having this clean slate to think, what are the things that I wish I knew from the beginning? when I was pivoting into project management? What are the key phrases and terminologies and processes that would be helpful for me to know and understand? And more importantly, what I love about this program is it's not just the theory behind it all. It's like, how do I translate my experience? How am I going to point everything that I'm learning to help me land a role in project management? How do I build it all? So it's like the building blocks. And so for me, I'm just really excited about that part of it because it's not just like a, hey, go take this course and you learn some new phrases, awesome, like move on. This is like a step in this process to get closer to getting a job and getting a role as a project manager. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a joy to work with you on the program and to have you on this podcast. Melissa, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in pivoting into project management, we've designed and launched a program that leverages Melissa's exact process for finding a PM role in 90 days and our years of experience in helping hundreds of career changers make life-changing transitions. So if you're interested and want to learn more, click on the link below.